Please excuse a short advertisement before I proceed. I am offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details are at the link in the description immediately beneath this video. As usual, links to the other articles I mention in this video are included in the attendant blog post at guymcpherson.com. I've received via email links to a peer-reviewed article several times since it was published a few days ago. The paper points out that previous mass extinction events have been triggered by planetary warming of 7 degrees C above the 1750 baseline. It then goes on to explain we will achieve this temperature within a few centuries. The rapidity with which we are headed to that temperature suggests to the people sending me these messages that my work has been confirmed. My response? No, it hasn't. more than 17 years ago. Accepting the false paradigm of incrementalism has brought us to the brink of extinction. I have no doubt that the same approach will take us over the proverbial cliff, and soon. As Australian journalist Caitlin Johnstone has pointed out, quote, if your ideology requires a slow incremental change while humanity hurtles toward extinction, you don't have an ideology. You have a pastime while waiting for Armageddon, end quote. Many years ago, I put my own spin on the manure we're in with this paragraph. Quote, politics in the U.S. is basically the same thing as professional wrestling. Both wrestlers work for the same corporation, and the outcome of every bout is predetermined. Even the commentators, who also work for the same corporation, know it's all rigged, but pretend otherwise. In the case of U.S. politics, the wrestlers are the Republicans and Democrats, and the commentators are the corporate news outlets. The average American has been dumbed down to the point that she or he believes professional wrestling is real. We have not yet experienced an ice-free Arctic Ocean, despite projections to the contrary. Although we've yet to accomplish this feat, the melting Arctic ice probably explains the presence of the tufted puffin in Maine, instead of its customary places. We have not yet experienced the uncontrolled meltdown of enough of the world's nuclear facilities to remove habitat for human animals. Such an event will lead to stripping away of stratospheric ozone, as pointed out in the peer-reviewed literature to which I have re referred repeatedly in this space. We have not yet experienced the fate faced by many other vertebrates and mammals. We have only recently experienced wet bulb temperature sufficient to cause organ failure in humans beyond tropical and subtropical regions. In fact, that began happening last month and is happening right now throughout much of the world. Our stunningly good fortune aside, we do not have until the global average temperature rises another 5 degrees Celsius or more. Believing paid scientists, politicians, and media personalities is a prescription for unpleasant surprises in the near future. What matters, as I have pointed out a few hundred times in this space and elsewhere, is the rate of environmental change. With vid this video, I again point out the evidence leading to this conclusion. As usual, links to the sources I quote in this video are included at the attendant blog post at GuyMcPherson.com. First, let's go back to Charles Darwin's understanding of evolution by natural selection. Darwin chose the term natural selection to contrast with the term artificial selection. The latter term, artificial selection, was commonly used in the mid-1800s by breeders of plants and animals. Darwin explained natural selection in his famous 1859 book, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. The simple version of his explanation goes something like this, and the general concepts are still taught in college biology courses. First, there is naturally occurring variation among individuals of each species. This is simple to observe in humans, for example, with our different colors of eyes and hair, different body shapes and sizes, and so forth. Such variation is the result of random, muta random mutations or copying errors that arise when cells divide as new organisms develop. Second, there must be heritability, or the ability to pass on this variation among individuals of a species. This concept is best known from the work of Gregor Mendel on garden plants, especially peas, in the mid-1860s. 
In other words, Darwin foresaw the idea of heritability several years before Mendel described the process. After the ideas of variation and heritability, we must have some sort of environmental pressure that causes some individuals of a species to be favored over others. This selective pressure causes some individuals, and importantly, the genes they possess, to be discriminated against. This explains why the undesired traits do not persist over time. The result is that the resulting population is better suited or better adapted to some aspect of the environment than it was before. For example, legs once used for walking are modified for use as wings or flippers. Scales used for protection change colors to serve as camouflage and so on. Over time, particularly in a changing environment, advantageous traits help some individuals survive and reproduce, whereas other individuals do not survive and therefore do not reproduce. That's a simple version of evolution by natural selection, and it serves as the basis for research in conservation biology, ecology, and many other disciplines. Now let's turn to a peer-reviewed paper I've mentioned several times in this space. On November 13, 2018, Strona and Bradshaw had their paper published in the open access peer-reviewed journal, Scientific Reports, titled, Coextinctions Annihilate Planetary Life During Extreme Environmental Change. The paper points out that a global average temperature increase of 5 to 6 C above the 1750 baseline within a few centuries will doom to extinction all life on Earth. Notice that ecologists Strona and Bradshaw did not shift the baseline. The introduction of the paper begins with this sentence, quote, Being in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, it is fitting to quantify the relative contribution of different mechanisms driving catastrophic biodiversity loss. End quote. I'll read that first clause again for clarity. Quote, Being in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, end quote. In other words, we have known that the ongoing mass extinction event has been, well, ongoing for a few years. Actually, we've known since Edward O. Wilson published his book, The Diversity of Life, which includes this line on page 32 of the original version of the book. Quote, Humanity has initiated the sixth great extinction spasm, rushing to eternity a large fraction of our fellow species in a single generation. End quote. Further confirmation came from the peer-reviewed journal Biological Reviews in a paper published on January 10th, 2022. Written by Robert H. Cowie and two other scholars, it is titled The Sixth Mass Extinction, Fact, Fiction, or Speculation. The abstract includes this information, quote, Although considerable evidence indicates there is a biodiversity crisis of increasing extinctions and plummeting abundances, some do not accept that this amounts to a sixth mass extinction. Often, they use the IUCN Red List to support their stance, arguing that the rate of species loss does not differ from the background rate. However, the red list is heavily biased. Almost all birds and mammals, but only a minute fraction of invertebrates, have been evaluated against conservation criteria. Incorporating estimates of the true number of invertebrate extinctions leads to the conclusion that the rate vastly exceeds the background rate. And yet, I am reminded every day that we cannot possibly in the mid be in the midst of a mass extinction event. That would be too inconvenient to people of privilege because it would obviously include loss of their lives. If the published word of the man called the father of biodiversity, E.O. Wilson, isn't sufficient, and also the abundant peer-reviewed literature on the topic is not sufficient, perhaps you'll believe the words from the ultra-conservative body known as the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. But probably not. The exceptionally conservative political body known as the IPCC concluded the following in its October 8, 2018 report, Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees. Quote, These global level rates of human driven change far exceed the rates of change driven by geophysical or biosphere forces that have altered the Earth's system trajectory in the past. Even abrupt geophysical events do not approach current rates of human driven change. End quote. Fast forward to the IPCC and its September 24, 2019 report, IPCC Special Report on the Ocean and Cryosphere and a Changing Climate. Quote, Ocean acidification and deoxygenation, ice sheet and glacier mass loss, and permafrost degradation are expected to be irreversible on timescales relevant to human societies and ecosystems. End quote. This IPCC report indicates an overheated ocean was responsible for the irreversibility of climate change. 
In other words, in two reports published less than a year apart, the IPCC concluded climate change is extremely abrupt, more abrupt than in any other time in planetary history, and also irreversible. So there you have it. The ongoing mass extinction event was re reported by a renowned scholar 30 years ago. It's been reported in the conservative peer-reviewed literature. It's been reported by the exceptionally conservative IPCC. None of these sources have mentioned the stunningly rapid rate of environmental change attendant to loss of aerosol masking. None have mentioned the dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops already reported in the peer-reviewed literature. Yet many people continue to misinform the masses because they, were, they fear they will lose privilege in the event of a mass extinction event that is already well underway. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.